Welcome to the USA Lacrosse Fall Classic right here on LAC Sports Network. That is Davey Emila. I am Tom Eschen bringing this one to you all night long. This is the first of two games. We got the men, the U.S. and Canada going at it first. The women will play later on tonight. And I just said it, Dave, the, the, the U.S. and Canada, you sort of just let everything play out after that, right? Oh, you know it, Tom. Excited to be back with you, and it's always an exciting time when these two teams get together. I'm expecting a fast paced a lot of fireworks. Looking forward to this game here tonight. Of course, more intrigue added of, by the fact that we haven't seen a whole lot of any of these teams in a long time. Here is the last time we saw these two go at it two years ago. The 2019 USA Lacrosse Fall Classic, that was the game in which Joe Nardella came down and scored the game winner for the U.S., which they seem to have a knack for that over the last few years, don't they? Yeah, they certainly do here, Tom. Really interesting mix of guys here today. You have your veterans that have been on this squad for multiple years, and you've got some guys that are making their Team USA debut. debut. It's going to be really interesting to see who steps up, who takes some leadership roles for the USA team here today. Four U.S. players won the gold four years ago. Three for US, for on Canada that were part of that silver medal winning team. And don't forget, after our men's game, we'll have the women's game at 8 p.m. Eastern. Canada and USA as they get ready for their world championships coming up this summer. So a pivotal matchup for them as well. A live look now at Tierney Field at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. Davey, as everybody gets set to go here, we talked about some of the old faces. Who are the new faces that you are looking forward to seeing here today? Yeah, Tom. Well, first off, great to be here with you again. Uh, we've got a lot of really good rosters here today. Some young guys on the U.S. side. I'm interested to see what a guy like Matt Rambo is going to do here on the attack side, looking on the defensively, a guy like Rowlett. A lot of guys have an option here to step up, really make an impact here on the USA coaches. Yeah, absolutely. For Canada, you've got guys like Jeff Teat, Jonathan Donville, Ryan Lansbury. You know their names, and you know they'll make an impact. This younger side for Canada, and we are set and ready to go. Justin Inacio and Trevor Baptiste, a quick whistle. Looked like that Baptiste move early. We are off and running live here from USA Lacrosse headquarters. The Fall Classic after two years is underway. Feels good. I was pumped up for this game today. Absolutely, Tom. And you've got to imagine that these players are feeling just the same way. A lot of these guys used to playing in the PLL fast-paced game with the shot clock. It'll be interesting to see how both squads come out here today. Hey, Josh Courier. You're working it through the middle. He had a really good season in the bubble in the PLL a couple years ago. Kluche in the lineup for Canada as well at the start. Trey LeClaire, you might remember him from Ohio State, gets his hands free. The shot deflected out of there. Tim Troutner starting in goal for Team USA today. He's definitely a guy, Tom LeClaire, that you want to keep your eye on today. 44, big midfielder, has a heavy shot, able to get his hands free. He won, really high percentage shooter. Yeah, he won the silver medal with Team Canada in 2018. He was a part of that squad. Here's Courier trying to work his way inside. A lot of white shirts in there. That's gobbled up by Troutner. Back we go the other way. Of course, these are international rules. It's played a little faster, though, like you said, Davey. The adjustment for these players. We'll see how they adjust as this weekend goes. That's exactly right, Tom. It's been a long two years off here, so it's going to take a lot to really pump the brakes. Guys got to get their touches, get into the game a little bit, and then I think we'll start seeing some execution. See Ryan Tierney, number four in white. Here's Grant Ament, the Penn State alum, coming off a couple of nice seasons in the PLL. Tom Schreiber in this lineup today. Rob Pinnell, Matt Rambo, like you said, Davey, and a few of those Team USA veterans from a few years ago, Trevor Baptiste as well in there. Brad Smith coming out of the midfield. The Duke alum, here's Ament looking inside and scoring low. Those quick hands, those quick feet for Grant Ament. U.S. on the board first. Yeah, really nice job here by Ament turning the corner. That's got to do a lot for his confidence and how are they feeling coming into this game. You can really see the two distinct styles of offense down on the Canadian end, right? They're playing a little bit of pairs on the wings there. USA comes out here in an open set, gets that ball around, and then they find a good matchup here at X with Ament just really beating on the speed dodge, turning the corner. That's one nothing for U.S. I talked to Seth Tierney before the game. He said it's like a man's got super jets attached to his ankles. <laughs> he sees this game slowly, but he plays fast, man. Yeah, he really does. And, you know, in this game, you really only need a little bit of separation, and a man is certainly a guy that can get that whenever he wants. Like Baptiste moved early again on Anasio. Like I said, this is part of the 
the transition for these guys and, and dealing with the, the roll, bit more of a rolling start here in the international game face-off wise and maybe Baptiste rolling a little too early so far here. It's a couple of wins for Inacio via the whistle. There's Ethan Walker right down the alley. He shoots deflected away by Troutner. Yeah, Ethan Walker, another guy, whenever he gets his hands free, he's going to let that ball fly. Really, really special shooter. Making his senior team debut for Canada today, playing for Matt Brown, the assistant at Denver. He and Taylor Ray sort of tag team this team at Canada here this weekend. Ray, of course, at St. Joseph's. And I like Canada going here with Cloutier on the left wing, really dynamic in the two-man game. Oh, he finds a wide open Alex Simmons. It looked like just the slide able to get there in time. Zach Goodrich, I believe, got a stick on that. Yeah, nice recovery there by Goodrich. That's what we're going to see all day here from, from Team Canada is swinging the ball side to side, very similar to the indoor game, causes both the defense and goalie to be moving, have to keep your head on the swivel. Here's Simmons and finding a freeze. Canada player, that one deflected in front and goes in. Canada ties it up one to one. Looked like Ethan Walker was able to finish in there amongst the trees. Yeah, a nice finish inside there by Walker. Uh, I think Canada so far has had some really quality looks and Walker there just able to get in front of the crease just enough and do a little bit of twister to tuck that in on the near side to tie up this game. Walker will play again at Denver this upcoming season is of course currently in, in fall ball with them so he's back for 2022 as a lot of these guys will take their extra year if if they want and the whole COVID situation going on let's see if we can get a face off without a whistle Inacio doing a good job early that one another win so Inacio doing a great job as Canada gets possession for the third straight time off the face off circle yeah, and that's Nardello there for, for the U.S. on the faceoff. Another shot stopped again by Troutner. Got that right fist up there. Looked like Joel Tinney with the shot that time for Canada. Yeah, Tinney, Tinney a guy very comfortable here in the field game. But going back to that faceoff, you know, Nardello like that. Easy, you think about it, right? They have to be ready to go in sort of three different styles when you look at those the PLL, the indoor game, and international. So, you know, certainly understandable to take a couple couple reps there to get adjusted. Yeah, absolutely. Saw Baptiste take the first couple. Nardella. TD Erlin is also in this mix. He has the eyes of the Team USA coaches, just couldn't be here this weekend. So, another guy to watch for. Here's Lanchberry. The ball falls out of his stick before he's able to gather it. Instead, picking it up is Jesse Bernhardt. Out in transition to Jared Connors, the Virginia alum, and now Amet picks it up using those Jets. Yeah, Bernhard, nice play on the defensive end, getting that ball up and out. He's another veteran guy that we've been talking about. He's sort of that defensive anchor, teaching these young guys the ropes. One of the four Team USA players who won that gold medal in 2018 that are here this weekend. See Miles Jones checking in here from the top. Big release and a score. How about that? Oh, baby. 2-1, Team USA. Well, I think you had in the notes uh, initially, Ambler and Miles Jones, they had their numbers mixed up. So I think Miles Jones is happy to be back in that number 15. Yes. He just gets a massive step down shot there. Nice ball movement there just to, to create that open space. And then Miles Jones overhand hammer to take care of the rest. You know, we saw the number switch happen right before the game here today, Davey. And I didn't really worry too much about it because you know who Miles Jones is on the field, <laughs> right? I'm like, I know who, where he, he can stick out. And he's done that his whole career. <laughs> Yeah, really, really big time shot there. Nice job by Miles, just playing those gaps, playing those angles, finding that soft spot for a big time shot. Probably coming off his best PLL season, or maybe his best professional season, Miles Jones. He was really good this year, 32 points. That was his best year in the PLL by far. He was, and what he did was he really showed that, that assist aspect to his game, really rounding everything out. Nardell actually picked up that ground ball, sticking around in there for a moment. He'll sub off as Pinnell now takes his familiar role, working on Owen Grant, the Delaware alum. We had Newman hanging around up top there too. He wanted the he wanted the big step down. Yeah, we're, we're seeing this U.S. team as they've had the foot on the gas pedal pretty much since the jump here, a running clock. They've been moving pretty quickly. Maybe, I know Seth Tierney said they've got to hold back the reins at times, but this has suited them so far. No, they haven't. They've done a good job, you know, not really winning any faceoffs either, playing solid defense, getting the ball out of their zone, and then really controlling the pace, controlling the tempo here on the offensive end. Pinnell working with a new mate there at X. 
mainly should be uh, moving forward. Matt Rambo, amen, of course, in the mix there. You know, Jordan Wolf here this weekend, and of course, Wolf was banged up for most of the year. There's a big pick, nice find, and a better finish. How about that, Ryan Tierney? He has a knack for that. 3 1 USA. Yes. He certainly does. Tyranny's always always scoring these flashy goals, but obviously this ball starts, or this goal starts rather, behind the net with the Pinnell Dodds. Doing a great job, as we were just mentioning, controlling the tempo, controlling the pace, getting everyone organized and on the same page, going to a two-man game behind that just picks off the Canada defenseman, and then Ryan Tyranny with an excellent grab and finish there to get U.S. here up 2-1. How did I mean? How did he finish that? I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> we like you said, David. We've got, of course, on Black Sports Network the CAA all year long, and that's not that's just old hat for him. I'll tell you, we've seen Ryan Tyranny score many goals like that. That is for sure. <laughs> he seemed like he would do something every single game that just made you say, "Wow." And a lot of times we've seen Thomas' his, his outside range, whether you know, it be dropping the hands and bringing it back to a corner, showing off his inside game and awareness there as well. Ryan Costabile getting some run in there, the Notre Dame alum. U.S. working through these lines now. Mikey Schlosser, part of that midfield unit. Yeah, you know, these... these uh, scrimmages in the fall are just great opportunities for these coaches to mix and match their personnel, see where that chemistry is, as we were talking about, you know, prior to this game starting. Who plays well together? I know that's a big piece that the U.S. coaching staff is looking for. Schlosser so dangerous down the alley. He gets it back from Amen. Here down the alley being called out. Costaville going into the middle, finds his hands free, jumps. That one just bounces wide of Drake Porter's stick, the goalie for Team Canada today. Of course, Drake, the Syracuse alum, played in the Fall Classic a couple years ago, too. You can see Team USA really going after these big little picks, bringing the short stick behind for the pole, trying to create some separation that way, confuse the Canadian defense. There's Pinnell getting his hands free, took his time and scoring 4-1, to one, Team USA. Yeah, just like we're talking about, Tom, really like the pace here and how Team USA has started out this game, just really attacking the net, going into multiple two-man games, but not only taking the first shot, they're working hard to get the best shot. And as you can see there, Pinnell on the loan on an island backside, able just to get in front of the cage and cash that in. You know, it's so interesting, and you see who is the next to sort of step up of this new wave. You know, and of course, Pinnell, a veteran, Schreiber veteran as well here. Baptiste, now you could probably say that about him. Kind of funny to say that, but now they sort of step into those leadership roles that have been since vacated by guys like Galloway, Joel White, Crotty, and, and Rabel that have all moved on. And Gorenlian, and you, you obviously can say his name in there too, but now it's a guy like Pinnell who is the leader and the veteran that trying to help these younger guys along here for the future. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Pinnell and, you know, a guy like Tom Schreiber, too, they've been such integral parts of this team for, for so many years, and it's so important to have guys like that on your roster when you, you know, are showing the younger guys or less experienced, you know, what it takes to, to compete in the international game. Um, and, you know, it's it's a different different type of challenge, so having those veterans there is a huge. Brad Smith working on Tyson Bell here. Ambler. It's his defender, Jake Stevens, the slide. Now over to Schreiber. The first time Schreiber has played here for Team USA since that Fall Classic two years ago. Here's Ament. Another nice job, a nice pass, and look, that one up over the top. Yeah, again, Team USA continuing to keep the ball hot, doing a great job sharing the ball. Again, not taking that first shot, and again, there's no reason to when there's no shot clock. It gives you, as you're playing your offense, putting pressure on the defense and the goalie, the best opportunities are going to present themselves. There's Tierney once again, got a pick from Ambler there. That one deflected up and away, so Pinnell will regain possession. And you see Pinnell there, he wants to even slow it down even more, continue to control the pace, get his right guys on, get into the set that they're looking to run and execute. Yeah, and I think that's another important part of this weekend. And we know that the championships for the men's side aren't until 2023 now, but they also have a little bit less time than they normally would have had because of the delay due to COVID. Another slide there in the middle, Ambler. 
That one deflected now into the stick of Pinnell. Working it back in quickly. Holding guard Lent and Schreiber getting mixed up there. And like I was saying there, Davey, it's just, it's it like for the women, it's more, it's been a five year process really, but for the men now, that it sort of got a year and a half taken away and they got to move things along rather quickly. That's why we're seeing Canada maybe get a look at some of their younger guys today. No Zach Courier, no Dane Smith, Josh Byrne, they're not here. But Canada wanted, of course, to take a look at maybe some of these young players and Team USA doing a bit of the same here too. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Obviously, this past year and a half or so uh, has really put a wrench in a lot of different things. So, I know how you handle it, you really got to be purposeful in all of these weekends and take advantage of all the reps and then the time of having these guys in front of you playing together because that chemistry, you know, has to come quick. Team USA looking rather comfortable here offensively. We're seeing some behind the back passes against this Canadian team. Right now, Team USA. A man up and finding Pinnell in the middle as they met. Those two working rather well together. Yeah, you can tell they, they really enjoy playing together. Just always eyes up again as the ball's moving hot. Nice cut inside there by Pinnell. Probably wants that one back. Another step down by Ambler up and over. The United States continues on the man up. Less than a minute to go here in the first. Running time. Clock will stop at under 30 seconds for the first three quarters. It'll stop under two minutes in the fourth. Here's Schreiber. You know what? And as a coach here, Tom, right, you really want to see how your team handles these, these last minute situations, final minute of quarters, final minute of halves, right? This is when, as we're seeing now, Pinnell, your veterans, they step, they step up, they lead the show here and try to get an you know, effective possession, get a goal with not so much time left on the clock. Got Jake Stevens on him, he burns him there, now gets it back out, Schreiber's shot, stopped there by Porter, gathered by Amen. Amen looking over the middle, that deflected back, let's see if Canada can finally get possession, they cannot, Ambler in the middle, accosted by Garlent, and finally into the stick of Porter it goes with one final whistle, with the clock now reading triple zeros. Just waiting to see if that was indeed the last play of the quarter as both teams gather on each side. It looks like we might have one, 10 more seconds on the clock added after that because the whistle did come on a penalty so that finally able to do that. So still just five defenders on the field for Canada here. And it looks like the U.S. seems content just to hold it. And a met will pass that to the referee. Now we are at triple zeros after one quarter. Here at U.S. Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. Team USA four goals from Pinnell, Tierney, Ament, and Miles Jones dominating possession and the quarter as well at the USA Lacrosse Fall Classic live here from Tierney Field in Sparks, Maryland. The second quarter coming your way right after this. Back here live at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland, alongside Davey Emila. I am Tom Eschen here live on LAC Sports Network. Four to one, Team USA after one. The second quarter just about to get underway here. You see both coaches, both sides getting their men prepped. What do you want to see in this second quarter? And Canada started with the ball quite often there in that first quarter, Davey, but then it was all US for the second half of that first. Yeah, Tom, you're right about that. Canada's just got to get more possessions, settle down, and get into their sets. You know, Team USA did a great job of controlling the pace, controlling the tempo, attacking the matchups that they wanted to attack, and taking the best shot, not the first shot. You know, what I want to see from the Team US is, as assumably, they rotate some new guys in, if they can keep that same momentum, same mindset, and game plan here in the second quarter. You see, we started with Team USA possession, thanks to that penalty at the end of the first quarter. That one easily taken there by Porter, and now, We'll see if Canada can get it clear and get settled on their offensive side so you can see guys like Jeff Teed and Chris Cloutier go to work. There's Owen Grant. Know. Owen Got Grant coming over midfield as a threat. He had some space there and a quick little step inside and unable to get that to go. Was backed up by Teed. Yeah, nice job by Teeth there. Important here for Canada to get a really solid possession. You know, you want to get all of your guys' touches, get into the flow of the game, have everybody feeling like they're in, in a rhythm here, and then getting into 
your best set. A lot of times we've seen them go into a two-man game on the wings. We'll see if they do that here again. Here's Dyson Williams on the right side working there and getting to the goal. Mark Lassini was providing the defense. Here comes Troutner way out of the cage. Ball bounces away and out of bounds off Team USA. Troutner scampers back in. A little unsettled here. Yeah, nice job there, and that's not a little thing, right? Riding hard, getting your team the ball back, and a chance here to get another possession. What a pass by Lanchberry to Cluche, right off the pipe, back into the hands of Team USA. You hear a lot about Lanchbury, of course, in the box game, and you're seeing a little glimpses here today. Watch number seven in red. He'll show you every time he has the ball in his stick exactly what he's made of. Flag down here. Team USA will now look to get a good one. No, he's certainly well, Tom. And I think that's the challenge, too, for some, especially some of the younger Canadian players, right? It's just you're, it's not as many touches as you're used to in the box game. So when you do have the ball, you really got to maximize your possessions, maximize your high quality opportunities, and cash in when you get the chance. Rostlin Perkovic. First shot of the day for Perkovic. That gets by Porter. Five to one, Team USA. <laughs> not, a, not a bad way to come out and take your first shift there. <laughs> <laughs> nice job by Perkovic, just coming on the field hot, right? Does a nice job just splitting to his left, giving that roll back. And then, you know, when he plants his feet, it's just a really tough shot for any goalie to see. You know, big, tall, strong kid. He's bringing that shot high to low bouncer, and it's just able to sneak in there uh, five holes. So tough on the goalies. Really nice job by Perkovic there. And keeping this Team USA momentum going. Yeah, he had all those bombs two years ago in, in the championship uh, round for the PLL and then fouled it up with a career-high 24 points last season. So he's done a nice job in sort of finding his role in the PLL with the Redwoods so far this year. Yeah, he really did. And I think, you know, you already mentioned Miles Jones as well. And I think both those guys, you know, have a couple of now more experienced games playing with each other and, uh, and both are playing at the best that they have. Inacio's done a nice job at X. Let's see if he can, nope, Baptiste, that's what he does, sticks with it and gets the ground ball. And Inacio won the clamp, but Baptiste stuck with it, and now both face-off men look like they will now get off with the United States getting possession. Yeah, nice job for the U.S. ball team there. The wings coming in, not giving up on the play, creating that ground ball that Baptiste ultimately comes up with and can, continues to give U.S. more possessions, which only is going to allow guys to get more and more comfortable here. The Mac O'Keefe, number five in white and blue checking in for the first time today here's Schreiber Matt Rambo also getting his first time his first moments of this one his first shift keep an eye on on Tom's matchup here got to be ready to go when he's got a shorty here's Rambo Rambo muscling his way in working into the middle getting his first shot that's deflected out of the cage by Porter See some of these new guys come in and try to just immediately get maybe their first licks in. And Perkovic was successful, Rambo wasn't. Uh, it's tough to hang out for a quarter. You just, you're just you itching to get out there, so as soon as you touch the ball, you want to make it happen. Luce looking into the middle for Holden Garlent, who seems to be stuck on this offensive side. And now Luce will settle things down. You know, I think in this game, just any defender for Canada coming over, you got to treat them like a short stick, right? As we've mentioned, all these guys have experience in box. They're confident on the offensive end. Got to square up and play solid defense. Now Canada taking a little bit of a different philosophy than Team USA into this weekend. And next weekend, there is the Sixes event as well. And, and Canada also with an eye there in some of their personnel today and next week. U.S. doing the same. Canada has an idea of who's a little bit better suited as, of course, those box principles into the sixes really make a big difference. And another stop by Troutner. Troutner with some trouble there, Teep. Great ride. Yeah. You know, as USA, as they still have to clear this ball, though, I do like what the defense is doing. Just doing a great job of condensing the middle, playing inside out. I understanding that the Canadian team, they're really looking to feed inside and get those high-quality looks, right? They want to challenge those guys to, to beat them in space, beat them one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so just really like the mindset so far by the U.S. defense. Yeah, and it looks like 
Team USA has done a good job of keeping the guys that sort of know each other well in some of these pairs, if you will. Right now we've got Heacock and Rambo out there, I believe on the defensive end, Giles Harris and Van Raphorst. It was a Ment and Pinnell. So you can see some of that familiarity with these guys now coming into play and how they're choosing to implement that here in the first couple minutes. Dished by Rambo in the middle, a whistle that stopped that play. Back the other way we go. Another Regardless, really sound. nice job by Porter holding the pipe there, standing strong on that point blank shot. So we are back and running once again. The ball in the stick of the Canadians. Jonathan Donville here. Played in the Fall Classic a couple years ago, and some, it surprised some people that performance from Canada. Had a similar kind of a roster, taking a look at a lot of the younger guys, and really battled throughout that weekend. They, they played pretty well, they even almost, as we know, beat Team USA. They had a, a lead there late, Team USA with two late goals back in 2019 to come back and win, but so far it's been all Team USA. Yeah, no doubt, and you know, that's probably similar to what you'll see even in tomorrow's games, right? Just giving guys uh, that more and more chances to play together, feeling more comfortable. Um, you know, that's what we saw last year from this Canadian team. The more they played, the better they got, and I you know, expect the same here this weekend. Dominique Alexander coming out, playing Ethan Walker, who has the goal for Team Canada so far. Here's T, no, he's dangerous, working on Rex Road. Gotta, gotta love a guy like Dominique Alexander, just as consistent and steady as they come. Just has played so long professionally, has, has never missed a game. Just really, really able to rely on him. T looked into the middle there, trying to find Ryan Smith, couldn't do it. And he had the shorty and Alexander, Alexander up to the task. About midway through this second quarter, five to one, Team USA. Like Team USA decides to take a timeout, get things settled in once again after scoring one goal in this second period. And with that, we will also take a break ourselves here. Team USA leading Team Canada at the USA Lacrosse Fall Classic on LAC Sports Network. Back live here at Tierney Field where both squads talk things over. And in my conversation there with uh, Seth Tierney over the course of this week, just trying to get a pulse on what everybody's looking for. Of course, John Danowski, the head of this U.S. men's national team squad. And the guys are trying to find, and I think we sort of learned that coming out of Israel, how important culture played a factor in chemistry and what they learned about each other. And that's a, that's a great example of just the winning formula that, that has worked so well and for this staff and John Donowski over the last few years. Yeah, you're right about Tom. And I think, you know, a note that you had from that conversation was just, you know, how focused on the group and the individuals that they have in the huddle that these this coaching staff is. You know, he's talking about sort of outside distractions or sources or, you know, whatever have you. They're not going to worry about anything like that. They're going to see, you know, of the guys that they're deciding to bring there, who's playing the best together, who fits, you know, who wants to lean into the process um, and create that best culture, like you're saying. And, you know, these are the type of weekends and type of stepping stones that both these teams, you know, are, are looking to build upon. And, and find that ultimately, you know, winning formula. Yeah, this event, the final event for the U.S. men's team before the tryouts for the 2023 team will take place and trying to find, you know, the right mechs and, and the new, like we talked about so much, the new faces that will be making an impact here coming up in, uh, next summer, I guess, in two summers from now. No, you're right. And, you know, I think what I love, too, is just from both squads about this game is you're seeing, you know, a lot of the little things being done well. Teams are clearing the ball well, but also riding really hard, right, trying to do the little things that are going to separate you in this process. And it has just done a better job defensively here in the second quarter. The U.S. just the one goal. Here's Costabile in the middle. Costabile sliding off the pipe. Bounces way out towards the midfield line. And it's gobbled up by Schreiber. He'll keep it in the... U.S. offensive side here. Six minutes to play in this second, still five to one. 
You know, and after, as we've seen, look for Team USA to really get themselves set, get the ball to the person that they want to initiate their offense, and then try to get through to the backside, right? Dodge hard, move it twice, and see what you got, making the defense move. Here's Shriver. Over to Rambo. That out to Ambler. Pass the Beal. Shoots and scores. <laughs> Pings that top corner. Brian Costa Beal, 6 to 1, Team USA. Sheesh. Yeah, Costa Beal, he is an absolute cannon. Um, I think we saw that a little bit there on the initial shot that rang off the post. But again, just a little bit of split, getting right handed down the alley, and then absolutely just bringing heat high to high uh, to, to get another goal here for the U.S. Again, staying patient, finding the best shot, not the first shot. And then, you know, when you can shoot the ball like that, it's a pretty high percentage of going in. Yeah, a lot of smiles on that Team USA side after this one, Davey. How about that, man? I mean, that's an absolute laser from Costa Beal. No, it absolutely is. And I think, you know, not only was that shot great, but you can see everyone on the U.S. offense there celebrating a little bit because they executed the way that they wanted to, right, getting the ball, getting everybody involved, and then finding, finding that shot down the alley. The Baptiste won the clamp, pinched and popped, even though he didn't have to here in the international rules, trying to keep those habits going. <laughs> a clean win for Baptiste. I haven't seen that yet today. Jules Henningberg working with Rambo. Brad Smith has gotten some good run here in this first half. Of course, Team USA also will play again tomorrow. They'll play the national champion Virginia Cavaliers. I know that's a game we're all looking forward to seeing. Peacock working it back out. The whistle there right before the shot by Perkovic. And quickly either way goes Canada. Trying to get something in transition. How about that hustle back by Team USA? A couple steps, though, by Bell, stopped by Troutner. Or Reardon, excuse me, I believe, has checked in. And as we've seen here, right, Team USA deliberately slowing down the pace. I felt a little bit rare of that up and down, back and forth a little bit. Guys would want to push the ball in transition. You know, when, when it's not there, and I think totally, right, the best shot, we can you can tell USA the coaches are really on these guys to to pull it out, control it, get your guys on, get into your offense, and take your time. They're doing just that here with a little more than three minutes to play. Also important for these in these games to get the right personnel on the field and get guys in the spots they want to see them perform in. Back to Rambo getting a pick. Rambo and Heacock working together. Then right in front is Henningberg. How about that? One, two, three. The U.S. men's national team leading seven to one. Really just nice overall execution there. And, and about a three-man game, right, with Rambo, Heacock, and Henningberg. We've seen Rambo and Heacock do that quite a few times before as they were teammates and line mates at Maryland um, and obviously now here with Team USA. But, you know, going into that two-man game at X, which we've seen Team USA do, Team USA do a lot, right, automatically that put, puts Henningberg's man in the sliding position and he's able just to flash his stick and be open there in front. So, again, really nice execution, being patient by Team USA. Team USA had about an hour and a half to get together here this weekend before this game, but they've at times, Davey, have had this Canadian defense sort of running in circles. You know, it seems like they have really clicked so far, and Canada hasn't had much of an answer on the defensive end. Yeah, no, I think you're right, Tom, and, I, and we, they've done it by playing together. You know, I think we've seen over and over again they're they're bringing uh, short sticks to these poles, creating that separation within these two-man games. So, you know, if you're Canada, you're just talking about your communication when that's happening, right? Early and often, let your guy know, am I getting through, am I staying on my man? Those are the little things and the little pieces that, you know, are tough and take some time, especially with a new young team. So I imagine that's a lot of what is going on in the Canadian huddle right now. Um, you know, Team USA side, right, they're talking about keeping this going, keeping that patience and execution looking the same way all the way through to finish this half. Seen seven different goal scorers for Team USA, and alongside Donowski and Tierney is Charlie Toomey now entering the fold here, so they're trying to get him implemented. Of course, head coach at Loyola, working with this Team USA side as well. And that continuity from 
a few years ago, Davey, also something that, of note for this U.S. men's national team moving forward and sort of knowing how to do it, how to get it done, and what not to do, too. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And, you know, you look at just the different, obviously, the PLL just finishing up over the summer. Guys are, you know, spending a lot longer time being professional lacrosse players. They're getting more and more used to each other. Those opportunities to play with each other, you know, they come up at various points throughout the year. And I think that's really shown here for, for Team USA. Saw Van Raphorst flanked by Giles Harris there running their way back out. A couple of Duke alums in their own right. Another Donowski. set of college teammates. <laughs> right? We, we see a lot of those working together so far. It seems like that's been the formula for Team USA as Nardella gets back out there against Inacio. Yeah, interesting to see the strategy here by Nardella if he's trying to win this clean and Inacio or if they're going to let this let their wings get in here and make it a 50-50 ground ball. Nassio will take an extra year at Ohio State as Nardella wins that one, pops it to himself once again, and he'll make his way into the offensive end for Team USA. And maybe getting a little aggressive here, akin to last time around in this Fall Classic with his game-winning goal, if you remember that. There's Hennenberg working on Cam Wires, someone Team Canada is really high on, number 20 in red. Really good season with Loyola last year, Wires. Less than two minutes to play in the half. Seven to one, Team USA all over Canada early here. The first of two tonight, the women will play next. That's coming up later on tonight. It's about two hours from now. Ambler working on Bell. Stall warning has been applied. Team USA has to keep it in that box. Rambo with a nice look down low and trying to find his way through. And Shriver backs it up. Here's Costabile. Just barely able to keep that in there. I'm surprised they let that fly. Here's O'Keefe, little toe drag. O'Keefe able to get it out, and I think they say he stepped in the crease. Back the other way comes Canada, 45 to play. Let's see if they can stir anything up. Yeah, really nice defensive possession there for Canada, right? Guys were not over committing. They were hedging and getting back on their man. Made it really difficult for the U.S. to find that high quality shot. See what they can do here on O. Well, they're going to call a timeout. Matt Brown's going to try and dial something up here. 30 seconds to play in this first half. And we'll take one more break as they take a break on the field here as well. 7-1 Team USA here in Sparks, Maryland at the USA Lacrosse Fall Classic on LAC Sports Network. Back here live to Tierney Field. As you can see, Team Canada trying to draw something up to get their first goal of the second quarter. Feels like their first goal of the game came a long, long time ago. That was Ethan Walker early on in this one. Now up to 7-1 to one, Team USA. With the lead, they, they have really dominated possession here, especially in this first half, Davey, and, and they've, done, they've been very efficient as well. Yeah, they have. Really efficient and really patient on offense. You know, we, we've been talking about that a lot. You know, interesting to see what Matt Brown and Canada draw up here, right, as we go into the second half. You want to take some momentum here into the break and start out the second half, you know, feeling good about yourself. So whether it's a you know, two-man game on the wings or, you know, pick play at X, expect to see the ball in teeth stick, number five, with a lot of movement and backside uh, inside off-ball movement. Look at Blaze Reardon, who I mentioned had checked in. We hadn't had a whole lot of looks at him as Canada hasn't had the ball a whole lot, but Blaze coming off one of the best professional lacrosse seasons we've seen in a long time. I mean, he, he's been unbelievable in the PLL since its inception, really. Yeah, he has. He's just so impressive all around. Just, you know, not only as a lacrosse player, but but a guy. Blaze just really can do it all and, you know, shows you that every summer and any, every winter. <laughs> How about that stiff arm from Kluche <laughs> off the of Childs Harris? Says, get out of here. Kluche now into the middle. Try to find the pocket. Could not do so. Giles Harris comes back, but it gets decked again. But here comes Stephen Kelly. A pass into the Rambo. Unable to gather there. And Drake Porter will innocently just run it out of bounds to end that flurry of activity in the final seconds of the quarter. That was wild. That was really nice look there. I think that was Dominique Alexander coming across the midfield line. Just 
sometimes you're a little bit too open um, and the ball slips by you, but just nice action all around. Yeah, so what, what a first half. What a way to end the first half. I'm sure we'll have more fireworks at the second half. The third quarter will be upon us in just a few moments. One more look at some of the best plays from this first half. All Team USA, all the time. Seven different school goal scorers on the evening. It's 7-1 to one here at the 2021 USA Lacrosse Fall Classic on LAC Sports Network. Back live at USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland, alongside Davey Emila. I am Tom Eschen. You are watching the USA Lacrosse Fall Classic live here on LAC Sports Network. 7-1, to one, Team USA leading Team Canada here in the first of two matches we have for you as the women will play here in just about an hour and a half. A first half dominated by the United States. Seven different goal scores. The defense playing well. And now we are off and running here in half number two. That faceoff won by Joe Nardella. The men's national team will take over here on offense. Davey, what do you want to see here in this third? Yeah, Tom. So it will be interesting to see how Team USA comes out. They have their first quarter attack in who really set the tone for this entire game going up. I think it was 4 or 5 1. So can they replicate that? And then can Canada get in the flow of the game here and take some time off the clock with their offensive possessions, right? They're not going to make every goal back here in just one possession. So it's about chipping away, putting solid possessions here on the field, and getting back here in this game. Here's Schlosser with that running start. Saw Miles Jones with a goal earlier today. And some energy here from Canada. Canada early. Here's Owen Grant. He caused turnover takeaway coming back into the Canadian zone. Jeff Teed on top. The only goal scored for the Canadian men's national team by Ethan Walker in that first quarter. So it's been a while. And now they get an opportunity here, Dyson Williams. Yeah, nice job there by Team Canada running transition, right? You can tell they want to push the pace, they want to push the tempo, but did a great job there of pulling back, controlling the ball. Now they can get their guys on can get into the offensive set that they want to be in. Teet's been quiet today, guarded by Michael Rexroad. Works his way through his screen by Tyson Bell. He does such a good job over the middle of finding his teammates. We saw that in his college career. Here's Trey LeClaire. LeClaire looking to get free, stopped there by Reardon. Reardon getting the nod to start the second half. Yeah, nice save by Blaze there. But, you know, if I'm Team Canada and Trey LeClaire, I'm going on that matchup every time, right? Big, strong kid, has a hammer from the outside on a short stick. That's the type of stuff that we want to see Canada go on. Time That ball just bouncing innocently through the middle of the field and picked up by Rob Pinnell. Really, Pinnell, all, all day long, all night long, he's been the one to, to get this offense set, to settle things down. Again, really being that, that coach and that voice out there on the field for Team USA. Here's Ambler. See Ryan Tierney back in there after he started the game, now playing in this third as well. Bit of a, the rotation now as you get to know a little bit better, working with a Met behind the cage. Here's Ambler. We're now working to his left. Ambler's team Tim USA on Pinnell here. debut today. Yeah, that'd be right, Davy. There's a short stick matchup for Pinnell. See if your team Canada have a guy ready to go that opens up from shooters. And there you go. It's Colin Heacock. Pinnell to Heacock. It's eight to one. Yeah, nice stroke there by Heacock, just bringing it high to low to bury that goal. Uh, but again, right, that starts with Pinnell behind the cage. Right When he has that short stick matchup, the, the defense has to be ready to go. You have to guy, have a guy in slide position, right? So the whole defense gets sucked down, and that's what opens up those outside shooters, right? Heacock, plenty of time there to handle that pass, step in, and just unleash that high to low shot here to get USA going again this second half. Heacock made his Team USA debut the last time they worked together. That was the spring premiere in Texas in 2020. Scored 14 goals in his first season in the PLL this past summer. Yeah, he, he really made an impact right away this summer with the, uh, with the Chrome team. I know they really liked having him there. Just really dynamic player. He can play both attack and midfield. He's done that since college, so. 
That one turned back over. Here's Tyson Bell right down the middle, and Bell scores. The first since the first. For Canada, it's 8-2. to yeah, just really nice awareness there from Tyson Bell and also showing you his his burners there. That was some speed, just taking advantage of the whistle, winning the whistle, and just streaking down the field here. As you can see, his nice soft hands inside just to get that little twister touch pass, uh, touch shot pass with the blaze there in cage. Bell with Cannon's lacrosse club last summer. Played in nine games, 21 ground balls. Also playing for the Halifax Thunderbirds of the NLL. Looking forward to seeing the NLL get back on the floor here. Just about a month and a half. Another whistle as both of these sides continue to sort of adjust. That was Stephen Kelly that time for Team USA getting in there against Inacio. He went too early, so that's sort of part of what we've seen here from the Team USA side. They're rolling in, maybe rolling a little too early. Right, they know it takes takes a couple reps to get going, so they're, they're just running all three guys through the rotation, letting them feel comfortable. Here's Tanner Cook, the North Carolina alum, making his senior team debut today. Luce. Luce got that away, but Alexander gave him a big enough shove where it was not that good of a pass. Jack Concannon in goal now for Team USA. He is the third different one we've seen. It started with Troutner, then Reardon, and now Ken Cannon, the Hofstra alum. Schlosser hits a speed bump and now gets his way into the offensive zone for Team USA. It's always nice to be able just to give the ball to Schlosser on the clear. <laughs> he's, he's just a big, strong athlete. It's tough to stay in front of him. He really he got a lot of attention in that San Antonio spring premiere. They really liked what they saw out of him, and obviously, they get some look, that got some looks from the PLL as well at that point, and of course he's gone out to play there. Nice dish and behind the back from Tierney, and that's taken away by Canada. Brett Dobson now in goal. And you see there, the Team USA pushing the pace a little bit, right? Getting getting going a little bit earlier in the offensive possession there. As we see Tinney try to clear it. Two now. Canada maybe getting some of the momentum back here. Maybe try to string together a couple of goals in a row. All starts with Teat for Team Canada today. Like you said, trying to work through and take a look at some of these guys and find out who can maybe make an impact in 2023. Here's Lanchbury making his senior team debut today. Looking to get in a two-man game with Courier here. Courier thwarted through that. Dominique Alexander once again said his name a lot today. There he is all over Courier here. And then moving around, that's deflected away. Dyson Williams trying to save it and good hustle just didn't come to fruition. So ball turned back over to Team USA. Yeah, nice job by Team USA defense there again, playing inside and out, not giving the Canadian offense anything, and then just getting that ball up and out of their zone, getting their offense on. Now we're playing at the offensive end. So we've had eight different goal scorers so far here for Team USA. If anybody can get two, let's see, unless they keep on trying to spread it around. They've done a good job at that. A lot of unselfish play here. Yeah, you said it, Tom. Team USA doing a great job sharing the ball, being unselfish, trying to get other guys' goals and getting assisted goals at that. Here's Perkovic. He's got a goal today. Guarded by Bell. That'll be Pinnell from the top. Going to bring Bell down with him. Pinnell into the middle for Heacock. That gets by his stick. Picked it up as Tierney, a whistle there, and it'll go the way of Team Canada. So a couple stops, a little sloppier from Team USA here in this third than we've seen. Canada getting in that opportunity here. And offside there now, missed opportunity. As I was saying, they got an opportunity, they missed it. Yeah, and those are the things that you just got to work through and that are tough with, uh, you know, throwing the ball away, having some offsides here and there, right? These are what these weekends are for, to really work through it as a group to get more and more official as you dial in and getting closer to tournament time. 
And both these teams will play Virginia tomorrow. And which should be a great day of lacrosse once again. Can't wait to see what the Cavaliers have in store. Good passing once again, a meant just a little bit wide. Yeah, just high there from Amen. Nice job of Perkovic there. I thought just coming in hot from the box, leaning into his defender, automatically drawing the slide, made it a very simple pass in front of his face to Amen. Just a little high there on the shot. So here's Pinnell. You can see the Canadian defense really sitting back at GLE, giving them some space here, trying not to let any separation happen. Nice Pinnell sort there. of slung that one out of his stick. Uh, <laughs> Perkovic's a tall guy, he's not that tall. <laughs> but no, it's, you got to credit the Canadian defense there, right? Not giving them anything easy and forcing that pass from Pinnell to happen on his back feet. Might be going the other way here. No, we're good. Everybody stays where they're supposed to, and now Ethan Walker once again. Warm night tonight in Maryland, 70 degrees for October. I think we'll all take it at this point. Just T looking to that right side. Canada just trying to make something happen. Ball bouncing. Stop. Alexander again. He might, he might be the best player in the field today so far for Team USA. We've seen him all over the place doing a nice job at that. Amen trying to run this down and he can't do it. But no, but you're, you're right, Tom. Dominic, he does such a good job with his initial jam. It's just so hard to get a step on him. And then again, just so big and strong, that extra you know, ability to get around him is just really hard. So it's almost you know, like having an extra long stick midfielder out there, even though you know he is a short stick defensive midfielder. Yeah, he's certainly a guy to look out for when it comes to the sixes events as they continue to develop those and find the right spots in the roster. A lot of those two-way guys who have skill sets like his. Definitely something to watch. Teat gets his hands free. Finally, Jeff Teat on the board, eight to three. Yeah, I really like seeing that from Jeff Teat. You know, watching him be aggressive and, and sort of take matters into his own hand. You know, just a simple, looking like you're going underneath, hard plant into the ground, getting back to a strong left hand, and then no one's better at dropping the stick and putting it in a place than, than Jeff Teat. So I think, you know, for, for Canada to really get back on track, find their groove and that confidence, Right, those are the plays that they're going to be looking for Teat to make, right? Being aggressive, right? Leaning into your guy um, and forcing these shots to happen. Yeah, I think that lean in, Davey, is what you saw there. Teat knew exactly where Goodrich's was, Goodrich was going to land, and Teat went the other way accordingly. Really nicely done for Teat. As, of course, if you watched this summer, he was fantastic in the PLL for Atlas. All-star rookie of the year. He was really good. And, you know, a guy like Teat, that's so important for his game right now because the defenders are going to be so, you know, eager to slide to make sure that he doesn't get that shot off again. And that's when, you know, people become open on the backside. And we know about Teat's vision as well. So less than three minutes to play. Canada getting a little bit more momentum here out of the locker room. It was 7-1 to one, Team USA at the half. Canada probably just saying, okay, let's win some quarters here moving forward. That's what this weekend is for. Trying to win this one. He meant with wires on him. There's the big pick. And they're going to say that that pick was a moving one. And now back the other way comes Guard Lent. Yeah, so we can see the adjustment Canada made at halftime, right? They're not going out and playing those two man games hard. They've gotten picked off a couple times. They're dropping back, playing it much softer. All right, and the last two times we've seen it end up in a turnover for Team USA. Saw Teak get the shot there, backed up by Lansbury. Lansbury taking his grad year at Richmond this upcoming season. Was taken second overall in the NLL draft by the Georgia Swarm a couple months back. Pretty much has all the records at Richmond now. See that one muscled inside. Flag goes up as Kluche went down. Get the call. Yeah, and that's always that's always a tight call there when you know your attackman is 
firmly committed to getting underneath, right? It's such a bang bang play. It sometimes is, you know, called as a dive, sometimes called as a push, sometimes will result in the flag. <laughs> Obviously, that's the case here for, for Canada. So let's see what they can do with it. <laughs> you never really know what is going to get called, do you, Davey? So it's a man no. up for Canada at the end of the day. <laughs> that's what it's going to be from here. First time they've had this opportunity today. A minute to go in this third. Continue to work it around. That one off the stick of Walker, picked up by Kluche. You know, seeing not a, not a lot of movement from Canada here, just playing gaps, playing angles, trying to find that soft spot here in the U.S. defense as that penalty time expires. Yep, out comes Goodrich. Though with 31 seconds, it will still be the possession of the Canadians. T once again, working on Giles Harris. Here comes the slide by Connors. You know, really little thing there, but really nice job of T carrying that double where it gets slid to two poles, keeps the possession alive for him. Trey LeClaire got decked at the end of that play by Rexroad. The flag comes in flying with nine seconds to go in the third. Rexroad's going to come off. So Canada probably will be content maybe to start the third, the fourth with possession. Maybe they'll try and get one more here with 10 seconds to go. Yeah, I think you can say, see Coach Brown saying, hold the ball there, signaling to his guys. We can just go into the fourth quarter, man up. So they will start that fourth quarter with possession. Trying to ensure that that is the case. Don't have to worry about the face off as the officials try and wind the clock as the clock has finally started to wind. Maybe a little bit of a glance. Three, two, one. The third quarter in the books here in Sparks, Maryland. Team USA an eight to three lead. Though Canada gaining some momentum in that third. A couple goals as Teat gets on the board alongside Tyson Bell. Meanwhile, eight different scorers for the U.S. men's national team. The fourth quarter coming your way next live here from Sparks, Maryland on LAC Sports Network. We head to the fourth quarter of the opener of a big weekend of lacrosse here in Sparks, Maryland, the 2021 USA Lacrosse Fall Classic. Team USA, an 8-3 lead over Team Canada, though I will say Team Canada did win the third quarter. As I had mentioned, it was 2-1. Canada getting a couple. Jeff Teed and Tyson Bell, the scorers there. They will start with possession here in the fourth alongside Davey Emila. Tom Eschen here with you on the call live on LAC Sports Network. Thanks for joining us this evening. Yeah, Tom, you mentioned it. It's been great to see uh, the Canadian offense come out a little bit more aggressive here in the second half. Defense made some adjustments at halftime that have been paying off, so we'll see if that continues here in the fourth. Canada working a man up to start this fourth. As mentioned, a penalty with 10 seconds to go in the third. That penalty going to expire here in just a few moments. Luce over to Walker. Still six on five. T. And a bit of space across the field. That shot just wide by LeClaire. Again, extra man wise, still seeing the same sort of plan there from Canada, just playing gaps, trying to find the open man. A quick restart there. Kluche hits the pipe. As the Team USA player, Michael Rexroad, comes back on at six on six. Here's LeClaire again. Kluche. Slide by Kluche there. Unable to regain his composure. Jack Rowlett guarding him. Oh, how about that pass? And find and finish. Ryan Smith in the middle. Gotta love that. Gotta love that. That is uh, directly from the box game. A little give and go on the on the pick inside. Really nice handle there by Ryan Smith. You can see, right? A lot of times, if you know, on Team USA, you'll see that being the left hand. Ryan Smith keeps that in his right hand, just plays inside out, able just to cut hard down behind his man's head, catch, nifty finish on the inside, just burying that ball low. Nice start here to the fourth by Team Canada. Ryan Lanchbury had the touch on that pass you saw right there. So talented, so skilled, and Ryan Smith helped Chaos win a championship this past summer. Played in five games, yeah. seven goals, couple assists for that <laughs> box-oriented team, as everybody well knows. 
No, that's true. And a lot of a lot of his goals were sort of directly that way, right? Just finding, being opportunistic, seeing the back of your defenseman's head. That's when you cut. And then obviously just the nifty hands inside to finish everything. And Osseo's won some clamps today, but has struggled to keep possession afterwards. And now Team USA will get it out. Jared Newman able to pick that up. Yeah, there's a couple times, Tom, that we've mentioned the, the Team USA wings who have gone in and then gained possession back. So seeing that be really effective here, even if we're not able, uh, Team USA is not able to win the clamp immediately. Everybody on the roster for the U.S. men's national team has now played today. So good idea of their rotations against this Canadian team. We'll see what it looks like tomorrow, of course, against Virginia for both these sides. Here's Rambo. Looking over the middle, that shot score by Brad Smith. A terp to a Blue Devil, and the U.S. men's national team takes a 9-4 lead. Yeah, you know, we talk about the summer that Colin Heathcock had. Brad Smith is another guy that had a really great one himself. You know, continues to get better and better here in the pro game. Um, and you can see why, right? He has the ability to do it all. He's, he's able to carry the ball, dodge hard, beat his man. But also we can see his off-ball abilities there. Just nice, timely cut, staying strong, right, with a pull on him. Just using his body to separate from him and the defenseman. And then that strong finish there, turning the corner. Nice find by Rambo as well. Yeah, Brad Smith, a three-time All-American at Duke, of course. Rambo winning the Tawarton at Maryland. Yeah, it's a solid connection there. <laughs> it's an interesting one at that, the championship weekend connection, if you will. There you go. 11 minutes to go in this fourth, 9-4, to four, U.S. on top. This game one of two we'll have for you tonight. We'll have a bunch more tomorrow. The women will play for Canada and the United States coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Here's Courier. Floats it out to T. Now Canada will work it around into their offensive set with Simmons. Smith rolling once again. Shot by Smith. Wide. Backed up. Go by Dyson Williams. Yeah, nice idea though, and Smith, he's he's impressing me. He's a big, strong kid that's able to really handle all these passes inside and, and get a shot off. So I think, you know, he's going to be a big piece of this team moving forward. He does hold the program record to Robert Morris for points, goals, and games played. So ever so durable, Ryan Smith. <laughs> Some people just have a knack for finding the back of the net. How about this defense by Liam Burns on T. They get all tangled up. A flag flies. Oh, wow. They stop the play. Oh, the penalties offset each other, so it looked like there was initially a hold there on Burns, and I think like T returned the favor here. But <laughs> the hold as he went. So they would have had a man up if, if T yeah. hadn't done that. Less than 10 minutes to go. I'd say that's another another call that could go either way. <laughs> Quite the battle going on between T, T, T and Burns right now. And now the slide brings in Lucini. That one, a wraparound shot by Williams. Bounces their back into the hands of Canada, and the whistle now going the way of the Canadian team, and now Simmons will restart. A little bit of a hold there, but you know, gotta love the way that both these teams are going after ground balls or competing, right? It's, it doesn't really matter what the score is right now. Guys are gonna go after one another. Oh man, T with a great look there into the middle for Courier. Courier, that pass just a little too high. Now a scramble for the ground ball. Courier picks it back up. Another whistle. And a timeout yeah, time by out. Matt Brown and Taylor Ray. So they able to get possession and call in a timeout accordingly. 8.49 to go here in the fourth quarter between the U.S. men's national team and the Canadians men's national team. A lot of good battles for these teams over the years, Davey. And of course, you know, you think about the last couple we've seen, of course, the World Championship and then even at the Fall Classic. I mean, these two countries, the history is there, you know, and that's something you got to love in this sport to have. 
there's no bad, doubt about it, Tom, and it's it's always going to be there. And that's what I was sort of alluding to um, in our last segment. Just any time that these team two teams are going at one another, they're going to be competing all the way to the end. That's just you know in the DNA. You know, granted, I know a lot of these players know each other pretty well just through playing in the various professional leagues. But you know, once they're in between the lines and the whistles are blowing, there's a lot of pride and a lot of hard play going on. So after the timeout by Team Canada. A bit of a scramble for possession there, and now they'll get it back out. Things are a little sloppy here to start the fourth, but 8.49 to go. Canada trying to cut this lead to four. We've seen Canada call, call a timeout before and come out of it and not really generate much, so we'll see if they've learned from that time, made some adjustments this time, and can, can draw something up to get a high-quality shot. Here's Shane Jackson. Now to LeClaire. With Newman on him. Walker trying to find some space. Works his way back to the right. And we had a switch. And the whistle going the way of Team USA. A moving screen once again. And Canada turnover in their own territory. And US on the clear now. Really nice defense there by Danny Logan, just playing angle so well, sitting on the strong hand of his offensive player, right, knowing that he's not very likely to switch hands, just takes away really half of their options, just playing smart, playing hard. Nice job by Danny Logan there, number 11 in white. Midway through this fourth quarter, 9-4. to four. Now we get to see this Team USA offense go to work once again. Henningberg back in there. With yeah, he's a guy, Tom, that I was going to mention in, in sort of the beginning. Henningberg, you know, hasn't gotten a lot of a lot of time with the U.S., but another guy has had a lot of really good summers and is playing really good lacrosse right now. And I know when his confidence is up there, he, he's as good as they come. Rambo looking at Heacock, and Heacock unable to handle the pass. Back to Rambo, though. Bounces all the way back to him. Ooh, Perkovic, he wanted that skip pass. Berkovic with a goal earlier today, as we've seen nine different goal scorers for Team USA. Have that Canadian defense rolling around, and the score by O'Keefe, the sharpshooter, gets the U.S. in the double digits. Make it ten different goal scorers, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, nice job, Michael Keaton. I'm getting more and more familiar with that with that lefty shooting motion over there. It's it's pretty pretty unique to Michael Keaton and, and quite impressive. Just his ability to catch this ball on the wing, sort of already getting his seat, his feet ready to shoot. I think that's a big thing, especially young players, young shooters watching. His hips and footwork are so good, and that all he has to do is just catch that ball back and follow through with that elite motion that he does. And you see, it's just really hard for any goalie to track. Feels like there's always room on a roster for someone that can shoot like O'Keefe and, and he fills that role really really well remember Ryan Brown how fantastic yep. he was in the world championships in 2018 with all those goals set in the record I mean O'Keefe brings that similar shooting prowess to this squad no you're right about that you think of guys like Ryan Ryan Brown think of guys like Mike Chaninchuk uh, who's been doing it for a long time just when you have the ability to, to spread the field and, and spread the range that makes the defense have to respect that and op really opens everything up Donville in the middle. Haven't said his name a whole lot today. Here's Kluche. Run a little Tar Heel two-man game there. Tanner Cook and Kluche. <laughs> Brings you back, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Boy, I have to call it out, you know? <laughs> Here is Cook, working along goal line extended, now surveys, there's the skip and the shot and the score. What a find there from Tanner Cook to Ryan Lansbury. Yeah, nice shot by Lansbury. I'm, I, for a second there, I thought that that pass was going to get picked off, but obviously got through. Lansbury, nice job just catching and burying that one. You know, really started with, you know, kind of jokingly said the Tar Heel two-man game, but Tanner Cook and Kluche, as you can see there, went right back to it, and they were working it from GLE, right? That drew the defense down, was able to find that skip, uh, skip pass and bury from Lansbury. Lansbury was a starting attackman on the 2016 U19 team for Team Canada, and this really their first glimpse at him against men, if you will. That's how Matt Brown put it. And he's, he's looked up to the task so far here today. 
Yeah, he really has, and I think you know he's a guy that you want to keep an eye on this whole weekend. You know, you you have to think that just more time in this setting, more experience, is going to get more and more comfortable, gel with his teammates a little bit more, and even be that much more effective. You see what he's done in the SoCon over the course of his career with Richmond. I mean, it's it's really unbelievable. You you go to his numbers, you go, wow, man, he's yeah. filling it up. No, he is, right? And that's what Coach Brown says. He, he knows it's there, right? Just got to get comfortable, get used to playing with these guys and find it. Edinburgh once again, and now Team USA working into their offense. Less than four minutes to go. There's Miles Jones, a little slip pass there to O'Keefe. A ground ball run down by Wires. You know, we hit on it a little bit before. That's a that's a play that Miles Jones was completing in the PLL. He has just a nice, really nice ride back here to give himself another possession. But again, he's he's really dodging hard with his eyes up and looking for for that skip pass for for an assist. A little bit of finesse there from Miles. He's added to his repertoire. And it looks like Team USA wants to talk some things over here. We have a timeout here on the field. The hat comes off. Over the ball, 10 to 5. Team USA doubling up Canada. It's been a good fourth, though. 318 to play here at the USA Lacrosse headquarters in Sparks, Maryland. We'll be right back. Back here live at Tierney Field at USA Lacrosse headquarters alongside Davey Emila. I am Tom Eschen here at the 2021 USA Lacrosse Fall Classic coming to you live on LAC Sports Network. Thanks for joining us here today. A 10 to 5 advantage for Team USA over Team Canada. 3.20 to go in this fourth quarter. U.S. just called a timeout right before the break, so they will get the ball once again. You see Jack Cannon there back in goal for Team USA. Yeah, Tom, it's been a, a very good one overall here, and I think, you know, focusing on Team USA here for a second and as they come out on, on offense, it'll be interesting to see what they draw up as Canada's deciding to put on pressure right away off the timeout. Here's Henningberg just using his speed, but a good oh. save by Dobson, and then Henningberg goes in the crease, so no good anyway. They're going to blow the whistle too quick to start. What a save by Dobson. Yeah, what a save, and really, you know, I think, Great decision by by the Canadian coaching staff is right. Why why sit back and sort of let USA? Unfortunately, they're going to turn it over there. But initially, it was a great thought. <laughs> initially, it was. You're right. <laughs> Give him credit for that. Ryland Reeves doing a good job providing pressure along with Owen Grant. They get ball on the stick of Schreiber, and everything sort of seems to settle down a bit, doesn't it? Yeah, so we'll see if, if Team USA goes back to what they discussed in the huddle, right? You got to think as we get to the fourth quarter, coaches want to see them in these end of game situations like we talked about in the first. So you know, we'd like to see what they draw up here, how much time they're going to take off the clock, and then eventually, if you want to put one more in here, trying to be efficient with your offensive possessions. You mean they didn't just tell Jules to run as fast as he could coming out of the timeout? That, that wasn't <laughs> what they said, that wasn't what the timeout was for? <laughs> I didn't have a microphone in the huddle, but I don't think that was hey. the. The discussion. I, I might be wrong. I love it. You know, you know, he, he saw the opening and, and decided to, you know, do his thing. He got oh, a great no, absolutely. opportunity, you know. <laughs> it's, it's the right play. Absolutely. The slick slide by Rambo, the better save by Dobson there. Less than two minutes to go. And as we've seen too, Dave, you mentioned these teams sort of settling in. I think that's what we've seen here, especially in the first few quarters of this one today. You know, Team Canada, a lot of new faces on this roster. Same thing for the U.S. men's national team too. But as the weekend goes on, I'd imagine the more they play together, the better each side will get. Yeah, you're right. And I mean, we were talking even before the game of just, you know, two years in the making this this game and just how eager you are to get out there and, and make something happen. So um, that I do not believe will be as intense of a feeling tomorrow, you know, having this game under their belt. So that's when you really settle in, as you said, and just become comfortable and really work on your game. Jesse Bernhardt ever so steady to take away there. Able to get it in the clear to get the ball back. One minute to play. Team USA probably looking to add another to their total. Schlosser beating everybody with his speed. He's a good one to give the ball to in these, in these circumstances, that's and, for sure. And the hair just makes him look faster. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jones. How about this move? 
few different fakes and a score for O'Keefe. 11 to five, Team USA, 27 on the clock. Yeah, I like it, O'Keefe just putting some finishing touches here, just catch this ball low on GLE, gets underneath with his left side, brings it back in front, which he's done, we've seen him do many times. Takes a little bit of a hit there at the end, but bounces right back up. And finally, we have a two goal score today for Team USA. We, we had gone almost around the gamut, Davey, and <laughs> O'Keefe into the second goal of the day. I haven't been able to say that yet for anybody on this field. So I think he was our 10th and 11th, right? It, that, that's correct. So finishing strong for the young Matt O'Keefe. Scores, he scored more goals than anybody else in NCAA history. So that's that, that kind of aligns. It, it all sets up, makes a lot go. of sense. 20 on the clock. Donville muscling his way in, deflected off the stick of Cannon. They let it go back out of bounds. 10 here on the clock now. Vance Burry goes down. See some slips here on the field today. Hold there called on Team USA. Three on the clock. Two on the clock. Whistle sets back up. One more try. Two for forever, the longest two seconds we've ever seen. And finally, the time expires. Team USA beats Team Canada 11 to five. Might not have had the drama we've seen here in the past between these two, but both getting settled in for what should be a great weekend of lacrosse, Davey. Yeah, you said it, Tom. Really great night for both teams. I think they accomplished what they wanted to, right? Team USA pushing towards tournament time, getting towards you know their tryouts. Canada getting some younger guys a run. Really interested to see how the rest of the games go this weekend. I think both teams are looking forward to it. Yeah, of course, both of these teams will play Virginia tomorrow. Games you'll see right here on LAC Sports Network. Let's take one more look at what happened here today, though. And we just mentioned it at the end of the broadcast, all of those goal scorers today for Team USA. 10 in all, Mac O'Keefe with two of his own, and, and that's sort of how you just, they, they sort of just established the pace as the day went on. Yeah, they really did. I really like the way that this team came out, both offensively and defensively, right? Set the tone from the beginning, both on their offensive pace, as we see Grant A. Men and Rob Pinnell playing a big piece in that, right? The second half, things got a little bit closer as teams thought to settle down, but ultimately it was uh, USA all the way as they were just proven to be too much offensively here for Team Canada. Yeah, that twister from Tierney, maybe the highlight of the day so far. He meant also with a pretty goal on his own. And we'll see what both these sides have in store come tomorrow. A few different goalies in there for Team USA. And meanwhile, Canada, they'll get settled in. But they, they've got the talent. Donville, Lance, thought Lansbury looked really good today, too. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. This roster is, is absolutely stacked. And, you know, as we've been saying the entire broadcast, the more time that they get this plan playing together, the better. Um, as you can see, just in the goals that they have, a lot of lot of inside action, a lot of um, sort of box skills that we're seeing. So um, it's more about the getting used to playing with each other, getting that consistency, um, and, you know, making it happen one, one day at a time. A uh, great night of lacrosse will continue in a little less than an hour. Tune back in 8 p.m. Eastern for the women's side of things. That'll wrap up our coverage from this game, though. We'll be back in an hour here on LAC Sports Network.